Morning. Morning. Um, so today is the third in our series of Black History Month artists, honoring Black History Month artists. But I see a person in our class that I don't recognize. And it's someone I find. Is that, is that person oh, identified oh, as art? It's me. I'm on the iPhone. It's Suzanne. Oh, okay. Oh. My 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 internet <laughs> isn't working. <laughs> oh. But you can see us? I can see you. Yeah, I can see right. you on the phone. <laughs> okay, cool. Very astute, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have I would have done introductions if it was somebody new. <laughs> How excited I get about you folks. So because it's not anybody new, I want to welcome everyone. It's great to see you all. I hope you're all well. I'm thrilled that you're all here yet again. Thank you for returning. And it is still Black History Month. Again, I want to repeat, Happy Lunar New Year. Uh, it's the year of the metal ox, which I believe symbolizes longevity and stability. So happy, happy for that great news. Um, I know it's Ash Wednesday. For those of you who celebrate, may it go well for you. Yesterday was Fat Tuesday. I hope you all had a chance to eat pancakes. What else? What am I missing? Happy Valentine's Day. February, uh, even though the weather tends to be dismal, there's a lot to celebrate. So it is still African American History Month and we will honor another artist of African descent. Although I realized today I'm cheating. Our artist is really a Brit and not an African American. So African American people, if they hear this class, are going to be rightfully angry at me. Um, but she is a pretty darn terrific artist, so I hope in the end I might be forgiven just a little bit for this faux pas. Her name is Lynette Yayadam Boaki. She was born in London. She is British nationality. Uh, I don't know what her heritage is. Which is the her ethnic, oh, sorry, yes I do. She um, originally, or her, her parents emigrated from Ghana. So she's a painter and a writer. She was born in 1977. She is known for her portraits. They are imaginary subjects. So they are people that um, she makes up from images of many people that she's seen in her everyday life. And her work has contributed to the rebirth of the painting of the black figure. And she has frequently had solo, solo exhibitions in England. She currently lives in London, lives and works in London. Um, both her parents were nurses for the National Health Service after emigrating from Ghana. She started out at the Central St. Martin's College of Art and Design. She did not like it left there and went to Falmouth College of Art, where she eventually was awarded her undergraduate degree in 2000. She got her MA at the Royal Academy Schools in 2003. She's such a baby. In 2010, her work was recognized by Akwi Anwazor, who gave her an exhibition at the Studio Museum in Harlem. So she's becoming quite well known in the States. She was nominated for a prestigious prize in 2013. Her artwork 
um, has been shown where she also teaches at the Ruskin School of Art at Oxford University. She is now a visiting tutor there in their Master of Fine Arts program. Her influence as a painter was recognized in the 2019 Power List and she has subsequently been listed among the top 10 of the most influential people of African or African Caribbean heritage in the United Kingdom. And that was last year in 2020 that she was ranked in that way. So again, her work consists mostly of portraits of imaginary black subjects. Her paintings are predominantly figurative with raw and muted colors. And I want you to pay special attention to her use of color in her work because her palette I find incredibly interesting. And I wanna hear your impressions and thoughts about the colors that she chooses. Completely diametrically opposed to some of the other artists that we've looked at uh, in the past, particularly in February. I don't want to talk too much about that until we actually look at her work. The palette is dark, however, um, and it creates a feeling of stillness and a kind of timelessness in her subjects. It's what I love about her work. Um, usually the people are lounging or resting. They are in quite traditional poses, the kinds of poses you might see people in art classes in. They're contemplative, relaxed, and relatable. So the, the mood in the images is relatable to viewers. And some critics say that's why her work is viewed favorably by most people because of these very relaxed moods that, that she creates in her imagery. They're usually in front of ambiguous backgrounds, kind of floating in monochromatic backgrounds. And they remind us of Velasquez and Degas because of these flat, dark backgrounds. And lately, her pictures have been changing, though. In her last show, in lieu of a louder love, the backgrounds and the colors in the images have a new, warmer color. I said I wasn't going to talk about the colors, so we actually looked at her works, but Obviously, I lied. So some of the colors are now bolder and warmer. Usually the pictures only contain one figure, but you're gonna see that that uh, sometimes changes. Sometimes she has more than one figure. And sometimes they reveal very deep psychological dimensions and often political aspects. They're deliberately and intentionally removed from time and place. And she's often asked, who are they and where are they? And um, she says what people should be asking is what are they? All right, her paintings are frequently given very poetic titles. And she describes herself also as a writer as much as a painter. And her very prosy poems and short stories frequently appear in her catalogs or alongside her paintings. Any questions about the bio info? So now, like we usually do, I'm going to show pictures of her work. And as always, please, if you have any thoughts or ideas, do not hesitate to share. Oops. I'm 
I'm going to start with some of her portraiture, and then we're going to look at some more full figure work. We are going to work with full figure today. Although I might give you a choice. I, I'm, I'm feeling nice today. <laughs> All right. So a very deep monochromatic palette. Love this painting. What do you think, guys? I like Any? it. I love it too. Why? Can you? Uh, I love the colors, the uh, the um, shadows, the uh, everything, the I'm contrast. Okay, great. Somebody I, else was I interjecting. Love, I, I love how the eyes and the mouth with the white coming right out. Yes, it pops out at me. Great. It's evocative. Can you, can you explain why it evokes something in you? I think it's the, <clears throat> the shadow, <clears throat> the shadow and the, the expression on the face and the colors. Okay. <laughs> there was someone else trying to speak, I think. It's, yeah. it's almost one blob of paint and there's so much expression. Yeah. And Yep. It's genius. Yeah. There's a lot of movement in it, and it seems yeah. to go right into his face <laughs> and make it and sort of make it look alive. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, isn't it a very upbeat picture? I mean, he looks forceful and triumphant somehow. You know, it's not po positive. Makes you feel good to look at them. I'm amazed how the hands are so uh, immersed in the color behind, but they're absolutely powerful, even though they're not that well defined. Yeah, the, that hands, the hands are incredibly expressive, aren't they? Yes. I think that the eyes are uneven, strengthens it. The, uh -huh. Not showing the white to either side of the iris makes it really more powerful and suggestive, real, realistic maybe. Yes, it, it makes you wonder what or whom he's looking at. Or where he's looking. Right. <laughs> or she. Yes. I, I, believe, I believe it's a man, but I could be wrong. I think there's a mustache and a beard there. And a mustache. Yeah, definitely facial hair. <laughs> definitely a she. <laughs> All right, let's look at another one. I, but let me just say a few things. I love the monochromatic palette. Yeah, yeah. I love the fact that the shape of the figure fills the entire page and the power of the form really gives an enormous presence to this person on the page. Um, and the fact that the shadow is almost stronger than the figure itself also adds to the presence of this person. And again, the, the expression of wonder on the face, I'm echoing what you all said. That there's a kind of wonder and amazement in his face that's just delightful to look at. I can't stop gazing at his face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It invites you, the artist is inviting you into this person's world. You want to be with him. It's very geometric, isn't it? The shape with the hands, the arms. Yeah, it's very kind of angular too. You're right. The way the shadow, the shoulders are so sharp and the elbows very sharp and whatever this is he's leaning on you know a pillow or the top of a chair is oh, i didn't even see that 
very angular. Even the shadow, um, the, hair. the angle of the shoulders. And the shape right. of his face. Yeah, his face is very angular. The, the cut of his hair is quite angular. And eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. not rounded at all. He's, he's a very sharp edge guy. A lot of foreshortening in, in this portrait too. Notice this part of the arm normally would be much longer if we could see all of it, but the artist knows to enlarge the hand in the foreground because the way he's posed, you can't really see all of the arm. And the trick that the artist has used is to enlarge the hand and shorten the length of the forearm and enlarge the elbow area. It's beautifully done. Incredible. All right, we're gonna look at some more. I love this one. Look at this one next. Someone's already started drawing. I can hear their pencil. I love <laughs> that. Can you all see? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. I think this, these are her later portraits because the background is, is so much lighter. This is one of her later ones. Um, again, the gender of this person to me is a little bit less obvious. I do think it's a man, however. Um, what do you think, guys? I have very strong feelings about this one. What do you think? I think it's a woman, unless that's hair on her chest. Ha, ha okay. <laughs> but what do, you, what do you think about painterly image? How does it make you feel? I mean, just maybe see it. Maybe it could be. I think it's interesting that the, the shirt and the background are almost the same, even though all the, there's all that detail. I'll tell you, when you first brought it up, um, I thought this was a woman, and um, it, it's unsettling to me for some reason, and I'm looking at it more so I can talk more about it, but it just was an unsettling figure somehow. Excuse me, can you I, figure what side the buttons, you know how the buttons are, but I'm serious about that. I think maybe that's a blouse, because it looks like <laughs> I'm sorry I brought up gender at all. I don't think it matters, guys. Right. Okay. Good. I really don't think it matters. Let, let's just talk about the painting and whether or not, what is the mood? Someone said it was unsettling. I wish you could express why. It, is that possible? I, I'll try. I, the look on her face, um, I have, I, and and I think the painting of the shirt and the the shadows and the background are all a kind of one way, and then the face is much more defined to me. And uh, I I don't know. I'm just in a mood today, Liz. I don't know what to say, but somehow her face is too defined in terms of what I enjoy about her paintings is that a little ambiguity or a little, a little, that the edges are more soft and, and the face doesn't seem soft. Okay. <sighs> Any other thought? Uh, I, I, I think it's the same subject as the last painting. And, um, but I love the triangle underneath the chin. Uh, there's that big, triangular shape right under like from the white uh to the black to underneath the chin 
and and even though it's uh, painting and painterly, it reminds me of a photograph. Okay. I'm going to go back to the um, to the gender because I realized that that's a shadow. I thought it was sort of a bun in the back of her head, um, attached to her head. But it, I see it's a shadow, and it, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's odd there. I thought this was locks. I thought it was a man with long hair. Mm -hmm. Oh, could could have been. So you're you're looking exclude. Well, now that I noticed that he does look like, like a man, even if those were um, mm -hmm. reds or. So I wanted to uh, make a comment, Liz. Sure. Uh, about this this one and the one the uh, the image you showed us before even more so. Um, for me, the paintings seem to uh, come at me like, like sculpture, like they have a, a form and a texture. Um, that's the quality that strikes me the most about her work. Like they're really, they really have, um, have dimension. Um, and especially especially in the dark tones, it's, you know, it's kind of amazing to be able to work in all that darkness and kind of pull out of, you know, it comes off the page for me, like a sculpture. Very sculptural. All right. Morning. I mean, you don't like it, but she doesn't. I'm, I too see the sculptural effect. And I wanna go back to what Heather said there are, there's a lot of geometry in this. You're right, Heather. There's this triangle here under the chin. Can you see my cursor, everyone? I think so, yes. Yeah. And then the, the triangles the, the shirt collar are quite fabulous. Yes. And the cheek, the and cheek then is the triangle. triangular shapes in the cheeks, the highlights in the, cheeks this person's face is very angular those of you who are doing the loomis method there are a lot of planes in this person's face that i'm seeing those of you who are taking the friday night portrait class i hope you can see the yes. horizontal and vertical planes it's quite breathtakingly beautiful in this person's face but no one said anything about the expression on this person. I meant to go there. It's such yes. an uplifting, it's such an uplifting, promising, never tired to look at expression. There's so much future in this expression. Okay. Any other feelings about the expression in this person's face? They didn't match his eyes and his mouth. Does that make sense? His eyes are cautious and his mouth is, you know, happy. <laughs> huh. So you think there's kind of a conflict between what you're reading from his eyes and his mouth. Okay. Yes. Yes. I like yes. the shape. Though. I think the shape is brilliant. Mm -hmm. no, I agree. And when I was saying he's unsettling, there is something in the expression it's it's a uh, fear in a way, and uh, trying to smile and make it all right or something. I, it, there's just some conflict in there. I agree with that. Um, yeah, I agree with that statement too. There's a kind of tentativeness and a frozen, a feeling of uh, trying to get somewhere with it, with the smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the other painting that you showed us is so direct and so present and so cl clear. And maybe that's what she intended for this to be an ambivalent in, in the person's feelings. Just unsettling. So, use of color. I hope we're noticing the beautiful quality of of her use of white. 
Yes. This brilliant white shirt, the flash of white of the teeth and the whites of the eyes. It just the way she forces us to, to move from one white space to the next, it's just brilliant. And then her use of darks, this black line here in the shirt, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. up yeah. to the black of the hair, the black in the eyebrows. It's just really wonderful. See how just a little bit of black can add such power and depth. Mm -hmm. This black line, then the black outline here on the left side of the portrait. Very powerful. All right. She, one thing I'm noticing about her work, more than other artists we've looked at, it's really eliciting a lot of comment. That's very cool. Uh, we're already at 1030. So let's look at some of her full figure work, and then we're going to move on to doing our own work soon. Ah, wow. Guessing, I, I don't have any dates on any of these pieces, but I'm guessing, I wish I could shift this over more, but I can't. I'm guessing this is a newer piece because of the lighter background, mm -hmm. but I'm only guessing. Again, wow, Heather, I'm so glad you noticed the geometric quality of her work. These are very angular figures, very sharp edged. Mm -hmm. Look at these negative spaces, so mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Look at how the figure runs off the edge to the page. She really uses space dramatically. The shadow of the leg how strong it is. Mm, mm, mm. How she and, the, it and then on the floor, there's a contrast. You see the polished quality of the floor. Yep. That's beautiful. It's so, and it's such a contrast to the figures. Yep. And she does that by, you know, kind of blurring the edges of the shadow, whereas the edges against the flatter matte wall the edges are sharper and harder. In the figure on the right, the shadows are cast to the right and darker, and all the figures on the left, they're cast to the left and sort of non-existent by the gentleman on the far left. Yes. So it like sort of begs the question of where is the light source? Right, and it could be more than one light. <sighs> and. Do you think it's spotlights? One would think it has to be spotlights because mm. it's so extreme. Well, it looks like a dance studio, so that's likely, actually. Yes. And again, her use of black and white, wow. This mm. is really mm. wonderful. Impressive. Mm. All right, let's look at one more of her full figure. I think this is one that I sent you. The three people, the green and black. Um, oh wait, I forgot to stop the share on the other one, didn't I? Uh, how do I go back? Can you all see this? Mm-hmm. Green dancers. Oh, someone, did someone just take a picture? I meant to tell you to take pictures. I forgot. Well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put pictures up quickly. I want you to take pictures of these pictures so that you have something to copy. 
So run, go get your cell phones. I'm going to wait a moment. It's one of the drawbacks of having an old teacher. <laughs> Why? Not a drawback, Liz. Well, I and we're not drawback old students. <laughs> But I guess I also can share the screen while I'm doing a demo. We can do that too. But I think it's easier if you take photographs of these paintings and then you can copy. Hmm. Or I also have photographs of dancers. That's what you're going to take pictures of. But look at this painting. Mm. How fantastic is this? Uh, look at the know. relationship of the two figures to each other. And she does this from her imagination. I mean, she must look at multiple photographs. It's amazing what she does with the color in the shadow. Right. And how limited her palette is. Mm -hmm. And how she makes it work for her. Now, these are less angular, do you think? Because they're female. Mm -hmm. She switched to a more rounded line. Yeah. Awesome. Softer. But I invite you to look at this figure on the right. Notice the torque of her torso and what it does to her buttocks. Mm. Sorry. The upward shift of her right, right side of her rear end, how it changes the shape of her changes. rear end on the right, almost to the point where it disappears into her leg. Mm. And the negative space is really Fantastic. Isn't it? This, look at this shape here. And then this shape between the, the two dancers. It's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And she makes the shadow a shape as well. The shadows are dancing. They're so mm -hmm. cool. All right, so. Their, her expressions, uh, they are, so they're very real. Realistic. They're really yes. looking at each other. Yes. The joy of this woman is palpable. See the grin on her face? Isn't it wonderful? Yes. It's all wonderful. And the green of the shirts and the, so much green in the background is... Right. And the know. red, the touch of red here mm -hmm. in the shadow. The red and the brown tones of her skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right. So we like her, right? Yes. <laughs> Good. So now we're going to quickly do a review of the proportions of the figure. Because it's been, we, we've been a week away from this. Everyone see this? Yeah. yeah. You don't see the figures with the heads in them? Yes, I, I do, yeah. Okay, good. So again, we can measure the human figure by head lengths. I'm looking at the male figure now. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight head lengths. The width of the shoulders, the heads are turned horizontally. One, one vertical, two, one horizontal, three head lengths wide. The arms, one, two, three, four. The arms are long. Look at where the tips of the fingers rest on the legs. Halfway between the hips and the kneecap. Okay, the female figure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight head lengths long also. 
Okay. We are one. Oh, sorry. One, two, three, four head lengths. The arms and legs are long. Try and remember that. One, two, three, four head lengths for the leg. One, two, three, four head lengths for the leg. The arms and legs are long. Don't shortchange the length. The torso. One, two, three head lengths. Let that sink in. All right, now. I'm going to show you pictures of dancers. We're going to first, you're going to take photographs of these pictures so that when we do the long sketches, the finished sketches, you have something to work on. Then I'm going to put the pictures back up. And you're going to do one minute warm up. We're going to do those gestural drawings, which I'll demonstrate for you. If you've forgotten how to do them, don't worry. And we're going to do one minute warm ups. And then you're going to choose one of the photographs that you like to copy in a more finished way. Everybody understand? Yes. Okay, so here comes the first photo. I'm going to give you a selection of black and white images of day. Oh, I did that wrong. Sorry, give me a minute. Okay, so. Wow. Take a photo of this image. I picked pictures that the figure is in an extreme pose. The more difficult the pose, the easier it will be for you. I know that sounds crazy and counterintuitive, but it's just the way it is. It will help you to switch into right brain mode quickly. Mm -hmm. And you want to use the right side of your brain. It is the creative side of the brain. All right, I'm going to do this fast. I'm going to go to the next picture. I hope that's OK. No, nope. did it wrong again. It's better if you take photographs of these than if you try and print them, I found, because when you print them, they come out too small. Okay. I heard someone took a picture already. All right, everybody have this one? All right, give a yell if you don't have it, please. And if I repeat one, <laughs> let me know right away. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, I like this one. I like the kind of square shape in the middle. It's interesting foreshortening in this leg. The, the, the gravity, the weight of his body is creating this foreshortening. Okay, we'll just do one or two more. How would you do the um, five heads in 
in these or they must still apply. Not sure I understand what you mean, Karen. The, um, the uh, images that you showed us, the, the diagrams with the five heads, oh, eight heads for the men and different amount for the women. You can, still, you can still measure. You can take your pencil, for example, and measure the size of the head and then count down. But wouldn't it change, this, the size change, the proportions change because of the change in... Yes, um, it would. Yes, you're exactly right. The proportions would change depending on the way the figure is twisted. Hmm. So for example, in this picture, you can't see her, her left arm at all because of what the fabric is doing. So you can't really measure that part of her body. You're gonna have to guess, but you can use the head length to measure how long her right arm is and mm -hmm. her legs. And then you can make comparisons to the other side. Right, right. Right. You can measure the head length of the costume that she stretched out in front of her. Or you could measure the leg, well, you said that, <laughs> measuring the leg. Yes, you can absolutely measure those legs. How much do I wish I had legs like that? <laughs> all right, I think that's enough pictures, don't you all think? Yes, um, Liz, could you put up the chart again so I could take a photograph of the- Absolutely. Page? Oops, forgot to stop the share. Hmm. We have to have at least one technical glitch every class. <laughs> and this is it. Hmm. I'm going to try one last time, and I'm sorry, if I can't do it this time, we're going to have to move on. Of course, sure. No problem. Oh, there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you pick up the last two um, poses that you showed? I forgot to take a picture. Is it, did you finish on the diagram picture? Whoever's taking the diagram picture, I'm gonna close it now. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Uh, I don't recall which were the last two. That, that's fine, I, I have others, I got the others. Okay, good. So now I'm going to demonstrate for you how to do the quick gestural poses. So I'm going to choose one of these images, or maybe I'll choose, do I have another one that you haven't seen yet? Let's see. Hello. Let's try this baby. Oops. I'm going to do a quick demonstration and then you're going to start doing just one minute warm up poses. And then we're going to finish up with a final, like 15 minute drawing. I'm going to copy one of Lynette's images that I don't think I showed you yet.
if I can get to it. Love this pose. So I think, can you see me as well as the figure that I'm looking at? Yes. Good. It's the first time I've tried to do that. Oh, actually, you're, there's more you and less of the thing you're, you're going to do. You're too small, Liz. I'm too slow? Yeah, maybe slow too, but you're small. Petite. How's that? That's better. All right, so gestural, which means I'm just gonna do it very fast. Okay. It's not gonna look realistic. I'm gonna do it first in pencil and then go over it with marker so that you can see better what I'm trying to do. Can I you tend to draw very large, so I'm probably not gonna fit the entire figure on the page. I cannot see you, Liz. Can you do I, I yourself you. half and half? We can see only the figure. This is... Oh, so then I have to stop the share. Stop the share? Stop the share. <laughs> if it's up to me, I want if to see... You press on, if you press on the figure, it may uh, reverse the scale. It did for me on an mm -hmm. iPad. So Liz became big and the figure small, just by okay. tapping on her. On her? Okay. Yeah. Right. I don't know if it'll work, but it worked for me. It didn't for me. I, would, um, okay. I mean, you can make it larger, but that'll blow out the resolution. There, there's a little line in the middle. You can move right and left. It says we're viewing your screen. Is this all that you have on your screen, Liz? View Never up. Mind. I'm going to spotlight me. Don't worry. <laughs> you don't have to see what I'm drawing. I was hoping you could see what I was drawing because then. Um, Isn't that the point? I wanted to see you draw. You're going to see. You're going to see me draw, but you're not going to see the image. So, here's what I'm drawing. I'm going to hold it up. It's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to now copy this picture. Can you see that? It's very tiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I wanted to project on the screen what I was drawing, but it's impossible, apparently. You can hang it on your easel and we can see. Or not really. <laughs> really, really. <Neither. laughs> so I'm just going to try and capture the gesture of the pose in one minute. So that means I'm looking for things like the slope of the shoulder, where the hips are in relation to the shoulders. In this one, the knee is very close to the armpit. The knee is right at where the forehead is. The head is leaning over so far. The ankles are right at the level of the wrist. It's an amazing pose. All right, here I go. I'm going to put my timer on so I only have a minute. Less than a minute. I hope you're all watching. It's really like a stick figure what I'm making. And that's it. Arm extends way over. I had the head in the wrong place. I'm fixing that. I'm 
rear end is thrust out further than I have it. All right, where's my Sharpie? <clears throat> to my time. There it goes. All right. So it's really, it's like nothing, correct? But what this action does is help me to warm up. You good to go? Yes. <laughs> so take yep. the photographs that you've just made and you are gonna use them to do warm-ups. How many photos did we take? We did at least four, right? Um, okay. One. Four. Five, actually. Five, good, that's perfect. Those of you who have this book, the drawing on the right side of the brain, uh, you can go to page 94. There's a great figurative drawing. Those of you who have the smaller book, there's a drawing on page 179 that you could use for this. So those are other options. Or you can look for your own photographs online. You can minimize your Zoom and Go to your Google search and type in Dancers in Motion. I'll give everybody a minute to do that. It will then, a couple of minutes. Look for images that you want to use. Sharpen your pencils. Get yourself a big fat eraser. Get some water if you need it. These are figurative though, so you're not going to erase, right? Well, for this part, you don't need an eraser because you only have a minute. You're not going to have any time to erase. Forget about details in the figure. You're not going to be able to do clothing or musculature or hair or facial features. You're just doing warm up now. Okay. This is now more like the science of drawing but it is going to get you ready to do more realistic drawing. Most people don't want to do this, but you're going to find after a few minutes of doing it, you're going to love it. It's much better if you have a real human being to look at, but unfortunately, we don't have that option. Maybe by summertime, we'll be back to in-person classes. All right, it's 11 o'clock. I want everyone to choose a picture and I'm gonna start the timer. And very quick gestural sketches. Those of you who are new to doing this, use pencil. Number two is best and begin. Very fast, one minute goes so quickly. Look at where the shoulders are. Look at where the head is. How far is the person bent over?
Don't worry about mistakes. You don't have time. Try and relax your mind. You're now just a pair of eyes and hands. All right, switch pictures. And start the next drawing. You can draw right on top of the old one or flip your paper over. Start the new one. Now? Go. We're already into this drawing. Go. Have a bunch of paper ready. Or just keep drawing on top of the one you just finished. These drawings won't look like anything. <laughs> they do. They, they won't. I don't. If, if you're I, worried about them looking like people, then stop because that defe defeats the purpose. They're wonderful. I love them. Well, good. That's good. But if you start <laughs> with the goal of making it look like Michelangelo, then you're defeating yourself before you even begin. Gesture. I love the gesture. All right, go. The next one, go. This is what they do in art school. I used to have to do these every single day. The whole trick to realistic drawing is learning how to see what's in front of you. It's that simple. Okay, how many drawings do you have left? You should have two, right? Picture. I three. Okay. okay. Choose another one and go. <laughs> go, go, go. Flip the paper over or work on the back. And choose another one and go. Uh. The challenge.
Okay. That was the last photo you had. So what, what I want you to do now is work backwards. Start with the last one that you had. And now you're going to work for three minutes on the image. I'm so possible. now you're going to have the opportunity to start fleshing out the figure. So you can start rounding out what you're looking at. So I'm going to start demonstrating. First of all, one of the major mistakes I made with my figure was the length of the torso. I'm going to go back and correct now. The torso was much longer and the legs were much closer together. I'm going to fix that. Apology today. Five ways to get closer to each other. And I'm going to round out the torso on this dancer. Flares out and the arms quite muscular and taper down towards the wrist and the hand. This upper thigh is big and the back of the calf is obviously broader. I wouldn't recommend you do this in Sharpie like I'm doing it now. You can try. Of course, it's very hard for you to see because I have so many lines here now. But you're going to have the chance now, the opportunity to make the figure look more realistic because you're going to have two more minutes. All right, any questions? So three minutes on this one, and then we're going to graduate to longer periods of time so that you can start using shading to make the figure look 3D. Ready? Start with the last picture that you were working on. Make sure you have enough paper. Even, you know, photocopy paper, your printer paper is good. You can draw on top of newspaper. It doesn't matter with these. These are just sketches. Whatever you have available. So you mean for us to start again, not, the, not go over the same image? Yeah, I want you to start again now. Oh. I, okay. I just used the original sketch that I had just to save us some time. Got it. Thank you. Start fresh from the beginning now. Thank you for asking that question. Everyone understands. Any other questions? All right. Three minutes. Begin. Do, can we use an eraser or no? It's not up for erasers. You decide. You have oh, longer okay. time now. Okay. We oh, have, an hour? have enough time. I wouldn't recommend erasing at this point. This is still really a warm up exercise. This is still, you're not going to achieve realism. This is still learning how to see what's in front of you. But if you get to a point in the drawing where you want to, I still want you to think about proportion and where, where are the knees? Are the knees next to each other? Are they far apart? Where are the knees in relation to the shoulders? Where is the head next to the wrists? You know, what are those relationships?
the difficulty for me is that I cannot see what you're drawing, <laughs> nor can I see your drawing to give you advice. In a way, I mean, there are advantages to that for you because you're flying. You're flying on your own. You're flying solo. And the mistakes matter even less because there's no one to critique. except you, and you have to learn not to be such a harsh critic. And three minutes is gonna feel like a lifetime after one minute sketches. Well, this is three minutes only. Is this three minutes? Three minute sketches now. Oh, I thought we were doing 30 minutes. I did too. Three minutes. Oh, well. Okay, choose another drawing. Start fresh. and begin. We're still warming up, but what more can we see now? Anyway. Try and mute yourselves, folks, please. All right, so that one's finished. 
Now, we're going to move up to a couple of five minute drawings. I want you to choose another one. And I want you to start thinking about using shading. People are hearing me okay, right? I yes. see a few people are moving closer to the screen. Esty, you can hear me all right? I hear you. You can't see me? I hear you, Helen. Hi, Helen, good. So I'm gonna, um, do you need me to review shading, anyone? Yes. Yes, all right, so. Watch for a second. You can do shading with the side of your pencil. I'm going to use um, graphite crayon because it'll be easier for you to see. The figure that I'm working on again, it, this is why you should not print out your photographs. This one is so tiny that I, it's really, impossible to see the shading. So I'm going to have to use a lot of imagination. Um, the torso is really completely dark. But remember that shadow is usually darker on the outer edges of the figure. And in order to make the figure rounder, Start with light shadow. You can always add more as you go. But remember to blend at the edges. If your shadow look, starts looking like stripes of color, it's not going to look 3D. You want to round out your figure. So on this one, I want you to start from the beginning, start with the quick gesture, and then start building on that to add flesh and muscle to the skeletal shape that you did in the gesture. And then in the additional time that you have, start rounding it out with the shadow that you're creating. Any questions? So while you're working on yours, I'll continue working on mine. That way you can see the progress that I'm making. Ready to begin? No questions? You guys are getting so advanced. Now how much time? This one's going to be a five minute. And after the five minute one, I want you to choose one, a picture that you really like. And we're going to do it from the end of the next one till the end of class. Everybody got that? So this is the final warm up. It will be for five minutes. No one has a question? Begin. I need something to blend with. Now, even with a five minute drawing, you're not going to get true realism, but you're going to start to achieve a more rounded, fuller figure. That's what I want you to experience. And it's going to give you more confidence 
and enable you to step into doing the longer pose. Sharpie to define mine as well, so that you can see more. Look at where the light is hitting the figure. Determine what's going to be darkest. But always start light first. Much easier to add dark as you go. Much harder to subtract the dark. All right, so now I want you to choose an image that you like a lot because you're going to spend now 20 minutes on your final picture. And you're going to start with a quick gestural drawing to get down the shape of the figure and figure out the proportions of the figure. And then you're going to work to define it by using shadow. Any questions? So of all the pictures that you've been looking at, I want you to choose a new one. A new one? Well, preferably a new one, but one you really, really like. And I'm going to start a new one. 
this, I don't like this. This one's too tiny. Are we are we using lines to begin with and then putting in shadow or are we drawing in shadow? Yes, you are starting with the quick gestural line drawing first. Just skip down the movement of the figure first, just like we did in those one minute drawings. And then try and capture the gesture. Everybody get that? Start a fresh new picture. Now you have 20 minutes. Some people are using paint today. That's terrific. Those of you who are new to figurative drawing, I would recommend you stick with pencil. Oops, somebody. Yeah, maybe I'll stick with this drawing. Nah, I'm gonna change. So if you're still having questions about how to do this, you can watch me first if you like, but I think you're ready to go out on your own. If you draw large and the figure goes off the edge of the page, don't worry about it. That happens to me all the time. Oh, this is really weird.
Hello, Liz. Yes. And when you say Sharpie, though, those are the markers, right? Yeah, Sharpie is a permanent marker. Oh, okay, because sometimes I use it and you can see it in the other side of the page. Yeah, it will bleed through. Be careful. Oh, okay. You need to have okay. paper underneath. I wouldn't recommend oh, okay. doing Sharpie with this. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I've been using using Sharpie, Helen, so people can see the lines that I'm making on the screen. It's hard oh, when I okay. use just pencil, it's hard for people to see what I'm doing. Oh. Okay. And you could use that on the glass when you're going to do a painting oh, on the glass? Oh, if you're doing glass painting, you have to use Sharpie. Are Sharpie, you doing okay. glass painting? Huh? Are you doing glass painting? Yeah. The oh. frames, I get the frames and I do the glass. If like you're we doing used to glass do in painting the multi. Today, you have to use black Sharpie, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Crazy, I can't do this. I'm running, I'm running, it's okay. Everyone okay? It's harder than I thought. <laughs> so, good. And remember, we have good days and bad days. When I, for me, the doing the very quick drawings have the gesture in them, and I like them better. When I try to get more refined, I kind of lose the fluidity for so, now. I'm here's what I recommend. You could do a series of quick drawings instead of the longer finish, if you would prefer. Time yourself.
your style may be to work quickly and that's fine. So while some of us are doing one drawing in 20 minutes, you could do 10 drawings in 20 minutes. Try well, I'm that. In, I, I'm into it now, so I'm gonna keep working, but I, I just learned something about how I work. You know, or- That's I, very important, that's terrific. Yeah, no, I'm very grateful. But I think just like in music, you have to learn the basic structures and then you can fly. But you gotta yes, like to anything, like playing baseball or learning how to ride a bicycle or, yep. So this is good for me, even though it's- I agree. And we all resist learning the basics, trust me. Myself included. We all want to be experts on day one.
I miss you. Oh, we have one minute left, kids. Great learning. I feel like I've just begun mine. I don't know about you guys, but. Time is such a frustrating thing. see it now but so our artist for next week I'm going to put in the chat box is Mangai Nisenge And also, she's also a figurative painter. So we will continue our work with the figure. I want to keep this going because we've been learning really important skills and I want to encourage you to build upon them. I'm thrilled at the progress that we've made so far. You will need pictures of dancers, so I encourage you to keep looking for more. If you have your own ones that you choose, I think you're gonna be more motivated to do those one minute and three minute warm up exercises. All right, anybody up for sharing? Margo? No, I'm just trying to find the artist's name for next week. You said you put it in the chat? Oh, I did, but I forgot to, I forgot to share it. Oh, and I noticed I misspelled it. I typed it in and then I forgot to share it. There you go. Should be up now. Thanks. Okay. 
So you'll need the materials you'll need are paper, lots of paper if you're lucky enough to have it, and pencil, eraser. Um, if you feel you're ready for it, you can try using charcoal. Um, Conti crayon is another great thing. I'll put that in the chat box. Conti crayon. Is, is that like uh, oil pastel? Conti crayon is a, an interesting media. It's not sticky like oil pastel, but it's, it's not waxy. It's hard, but soft at the same time. It's not as soft as a soft pastel. Uh, it's not as soft as charcoal. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful drawing media. It comes in colors, which is why I particularly love it. It comes in all different earth tones, ochres, red ochre, yellow ochre. And it's Conti crayon. Conti crayon. I put it in the chat box. I shared okay. it in the chat box. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, good. Okay. Who wants to share? Oh, say Jin. All right, wait. I'm going to spotlight you. Wow. Wow, great. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Ex excellent proportions, Sejin. Really good. Go even darker oh, with your okay. darks, okay? That is my one suggestion for you. Okay. I feel too, the hands and feet are a tiny bit too tiny. Oh. Look at me for a second. <laughs> you think the hands are as big as the face. <laughs> right. Put, put your hand, everybody put your hand over your face. So hands and feet are actually bigger than we realize. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I think the proportions are excellent. Okay. Really well done. You got that foreshortening in her arm down really well. Good for you. <laughs> Good job. All right, thank you for sharing. And go a little bit darker. Okay. You're ready to go darker with your shading now. All right, Margo, you got your hand up. So let's thank you so much, Sajin. You not only help yourself, but you're helping others by sharing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Can you see it? I can I'm fine it. you, Margo. Okay. I hate when this happens, but I cannot find you, Margo. I'm right here. I know, I know you are, but I. She has her hands up. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I can't find her picture. Um, Can you see it? Yeah, it's kind of tiny. This no, it's worked. You highlighted. Oh, this is a technical thing. I had this problem last time. Just bear with me, everybody. Oh, somehow I did it. I, I pinned Margo. <laughs> yeah, if you pin her <laughs> until Liz finds it, but you can pin her. Did it work for everybody? I see Margo's picture. Yeah, I do too now. Oh, great. It's a big. You see it in, enlarged? I see Yes, it. if you if you hit, click on the three dots and say pin Margo. Okay. It'll bring her up. But Liz will bring it too. Okay, yeah, now I see Margo. Oh, no. There we go. <laughs> this is the back of a <the> guy. 
Yeah, we could tell. Oh, yeah. This, you were looking at that wonderful painting by Lynette. Yes. I like the color. The proportions are terrific. My, and I love how you let the arms and legs run off the edges of the paper. Awesome. I had to. <laughs> you, need, you need to soften your darks. You need okay. to blend your shading more into the figure. Yeah, particularly right here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So blend, round out the tush. Okay. All right. And it's going to look more real. It's going to it's going to make it look more three dimensional. Well done. Excellent, Margo. Thank you. <laughs> Who else? Robin, you want to share? Robin, okay. Yes, I, I will share. Um, I, this is. Uh, I would oh, say. Yeah. I like the action in this. Hold it still. Yeah. Every I mean, the portions I think are, are off way off and I struggled with this because the paint the photograph was you know the, the dress was covering a lot of the form right which trying to work with the um, negative space but anyway I, it was it was just fun to start to try to do this I love the movement in this image I love the fast quality of it. Beautiful. I love the angular edges, the way you've emphasized the triangle. It's really a beautiful drawing. I would get even darker on the edges. And it's a little confusing at the top. You need maybe to define the head just a little bit, not a lot. Yeah. Okay. But it, I need something up here because of the confusion, visual confusion I have at the top. Otherwise, I think it's fabulous. Oh, my God, thanks. You're welcome. You we learned a lot. That's what I care about. Please. All right. Essie, all right. Oh, look at that. Um, the legs are very heavy, but this is what <laughs> I... <laughs> Put them on a diet. <laughs> oh, my legs are, yeah, heavy too. Stop it. Can you see? I, I like also the movement in this, the swing of the arms and the legs. Terrific. You got this incredible foreshortening of this upper leg here. Terrific. Okay. This is great. Yeah, I think perhaps the torso. Yeah is a bit short and a bit wide okay other than that and the head the head on this one is a little tiny you can give it more hair yeah yeah more hair more hair or more head <laughs> give it more hair that's the way to fix it okay thanks liz fabulous fantastic we have been doing great today who else Come on, Katie, all right. Same one, so it's the same one. But I cheated because I like when doing this, doing it on top of the sketches. I think it sort of no, makes it interesting. Fine. So I have some of the, yeah. the pencil yeah. sketches behind it. And I know what's wrong in it. I can, you know, see things wrong. But, but that's what makes it art, Katie. Yeah. It's the human quality. There, I mean, this yeah, one there is are few proportional glitches. Yeah. But there's such strength in this drawing. I love the power of your lines. Thank you. Wonderful. Keep working on that one, all right? Sure. Show us next week. I think I'd have to start over to really correct it. I, have I don't to think so. Go. Go. But you can always start over. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Who else? Okay, Karen. Speaking of starting over, <laughs> um, hang on, I've got. Wow. I, you know, it looks so much better backwards. 
Um, <laughs> it does. I have a habit of, um, I'm a heavy pencil drawer, very heavy, and um, I need to lighten up. In fact, one of the portraits that I, I did, I, I was going to send you, I hadn't finished it, but um, it, it got so heavy that I couldn't even erase anything off it, so it's very dark. But this was a great class for me. And um, I, there's real, oh, and also um, one of the, my excuses is that I lost, my, my computer died in, in the middle of it. And so I really lost a lot of time trying to figure out how to plug it in. So um, hold up the drawing. Hold up the drawing so we can oh, see it. Okay. Hold it. I think this is terrific. This is the one I was struggling with in the beginning. So I know some of the problems in doing this. this I could really never, I could not get his head to, to be in the right place. Far enough down, yes. Yeah. Yes. I think you did well. Thank this, you. The, the arm here, his left arm, possibly longer. Right. That might've helped you with the head tilt. But uh, I love yeah. the darkness of your pencil work. I love that. I love <laughs> the darkness of your pencil work. Keep at it, kid. Okay, I will. Thank you for sharing. Who Thanks. else? Shirley, Jane, Talene. Talene, you want to share? Alice, you haven't really? shared in a while. Talene, okay. Really bad. But mine was oh. the picture. I don't know if you could see it. Yes. You and then that, the gesture. This is great. I liked, I think there's more like activity in this picture than this drawing. I don't know how to say it. Like the motion. I don't know. Your drawing has quite a bit of motion. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. I, the only question I had is the length of the arms you might want to work there's something about this arm no the other one that ah, one is okay. fine to me yeah i'm not sure that's the only part of this drawing i question okay and then i need a little bit of shadow under his chin a little bit more darkness under his chin to define the head a little more and I okay it's a great drawing okay will do awesome what time is it? It's 12 o'clock. Damn. Susan, you didn't get to share. Send me JPEGs, everybody. Because we have to say goodbye. Thank you. Say goodbye. <laughs> Thanks very Thank much. You. Thanks, Liz. Bye. JPEGs. Thanks, Thanks Liz. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. I'll see you next Bye. week, Bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Gary Mathenge. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a safe week. You too. <coughs> Excuse me. Bye-bye. Hi, Heidi. Bye, Heidi. Bye.